This is Warrior Sound Live. Here comes Curry. Step back off the dribble three. Are you Here's Lawrence Scott. Thank you. We begin this show with various emotional scenes centered around the NBA playoffs in Orlando on Wednesday, August 26th. This is a landmark day in the history of American sport. NBA teams refusing to play their scheduled games in protest of racial injustice in this country. Their boycott in Orlando, a direct result of a shooting which took place in Kenosha, Wisconsin, 40 miles from Milwaukee, where on Sunday, 29-year-old Jacob Blake was shot seven times in the back. Players and coaches have been vocal in voicing their outrage and disgust, and today made a resounding and unified statement by refusing to take the court. This is, this is tough. I mean, right now my head is like ready to explode, like just in the thoughts of what's going on. And uh, I don't know if I'm even appropriate enough to say it, what the, what the players are feeling and how they're feeling. And um, I haven't talked to any of the players. I'm just but like coming in, even like driving here and getting into, into the, into the studio, hearing calls and people talking. And for me, I think the biggest thing now is to kind of, as a black man, as a former player, I think it's for best for me to support the players and just not be here tonight. And figure out what happens after that. Yeah, I, I just don't feel equipped to do that. And I respect that. All kinds of emotions on display as former warrior Chris Webber had this to say on TNT. It was uh, reported that four years ago, today, in a preseason game in Wisconsin, the Kaepernick first took a knee. No, this has never happened before, but I'm sure that Dr. Harry Edwards, Dr. John Carlos, Arthur Ashe, Jackie Robinson, and others have been praying for this day. Shout out to Kenny, they walked off. I wanted to have a voice in here because I feel like we only have the same couple voices talking during these times. So it was very important for me to come over here. I keep hearing the question like, what's next, what's next? Well, you got to plan what's next. You have to figure out what's next. Um, I'm very proud of the players. I don't know the next steps. Don't really care what the next steps are because the first steps are to garner attention. And they have everybody's attention around the world right now then leadership and others will get together and decide the next steps. So we know it won't end tomorrow. We know that there's been a million marches and nothing will change tomorrow. We know vote. We keep hearing vote. Everybody vote. But I'm here to speak for those that are always marginalized. Those that live in these neighborhoods where we preach and tell them to vote and walk away. Charles Barkley came to my high school. Just seeing him in the locker room, seeing his hands and his body, that inspired me. You can't see something. You can't be something until you see it. And when I tell you the little kids that have called me upset, I have a godson that has autism and I just had to explain to him why we aren't playing. I have young nephews that I've had to talk to about death before they've even seen it in a movie. If not now, when? If not during a pandemic <laughs> and countless lives being lost, if not now, when? That's, that's all I just want to hear from the rest of the night while everybody's pontificating and thinking and soapboxing and all of that. We know nothing is going to change. We get it. If Martin Luther King got shot and risked his life, Mega Evers, if we've seen this and all of our heroes constantly taken down, we understand it's not going to end. But that does not mean, young men, that you don't do anything. Don't listen to these people telling you don't do anything because it's not going to end right away. You are starting something for the next generation and the next generation to take over. Do you have to be smart? Yes. Do you have to make sure that you have a plan? Yes. 
Do you have to be articulate about that plan? Yes. All of those things. But that's what you're going to do. They're professionals. They know how to be the best of themselves. And so I applaud it. I applaud it because it is the young people. It is the young people leading the way. And I applaud them. Warriors broadcaster Bob Fitzgerald in Orlando set to call the Bucks Magic game with Jim Jackson. Joined NBA TV to explain the events as they had unfolded on Wednesday. You had Orlando come out and start warming up. And as Jim and I were going over notes and getting ready, we looked at Milwaukee did not take the court. And then the game officials, um, they were huddling, and then there were some league officials discussing things with them. And I think, Jim, that's the first time you and I said, wait a minute, there's a delay here. And then Rebecca uh, kind of shared some of the reports, as you have, Chris, that there are discussions about how to handle whether or not they play. Because, you know, we live right now in the bubble. And so health-wise, that was a big deal. But everyone here in the NBA is totally aware of the real world. And so the real world is being talked about every single day as to the events that are happening in our country. And so that's where I think the discussion among the players is happening now. <clears throat> it, it, you know, excuse me, it is. And it's very important from the beginning when the question got posed to me about should the players play uh, in the bubble. I said, yes. Well, it'll take away from the message that's being sent. I said, no, it won't. I said, I, I believe that the players can make it a tremendous statement together. Each and every time they're on the court, at practice, whatever it may be, the message will continue to be reverberated through the country because they're in a position uh, to speak, to show their action. Right now what's going on is unsettling because it's not about the game. It's about human life. And a lot of times I'll go back and I'll read a lot of things about, well, you know, you're an athlete, you're spoiled, you're making millions of dollars, you're a broadcaster, you shouldn't worry about it. America's been great to you. But here's the thing about it. It's not about me. It's not about me being selfish. A community is built around people that look out for each other. Okay. And just because I made it or another player made it doesn't mean that now we should forget about that. That's why a lot of these players right now are saying, we have a voice and we want to give something back. We want to lend our voice, our time, our money, whatever it may be to bring awareness, but more importantly, to bring change. Yes, we may be millionaires. Yes, we have benefited. But like Sam said, it's somebody else we grew up with and we know that are struggling with this each and every day. And if we don't do something, then we can't expect somebody else to do something. So whatever the players come to, whatever decision they choose to make, I'm for it. As long as you have a concise decision plan on how this affects now and what you plan to do to move forward, I'm with it. And the thing, too, is we've seen, Chris, where there's messages on the back of so many players' jerseys, equality, vote, but how many more? Now, that was after George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. How many more? Well, Jacob Blake has become another one. We've reached that point where it's got to be more than maybe just something on the back of a jersey, and the players are taking that to heart. Well, they are, and the unsettling truth about this is that, you know, we talk about different laws being changed, and, yes, how you persecute or prosecute the police officers when they do something that's out of line uh, during their duty. But also, we've had many of laws, the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, 19th Amendment. We have Fair Housing Act. We had the Civil Rights Bill. We had all of these things to change and say discrimination is illegal. But what hasn't changed a lot of times, Bob, is the mindset of the people in control. We can change all the laws we want, but in education, if we don't change the mindset of how someone of non-color sees me of color or somebody else of color or a female a minority of their gender, okay, then it, all the laws do, do not matter. They don't apply because you don't see me as your equal. And if you don't see me as your equal, I don't care what the law is, you're going to treat me a certain way, and I'm always going to be subjugated to being a second-class citizen. And that's something that the early settlers here in America didn't want to have. <laughs> Hence, revolution, constitution, United States of America. We conclude with more somber news as we remember legendary Arizona head coach Lute Olson, who passed away on Thursday. We leave you with Warriors head coach Steve Kerr on KNBR Radio with Warriors radio analyst and former Arizona teammate Tom Tolbert on the passing of their college coach. You know, we we um, we all knew this was imminent, and yet, um, you know, when you when you hear the news, it's it's still pretty rough. Um, I was with Judd Bushler last night having dinner. Uh, when we heard the news and, and, uh, you know, we, we, uh, 
set a toast to Luge and and you know shared shared some stories with with the table and laughed and and then this morning when I woke up I was I was crushed I was just really really sad and I had you know like you uh, a million texts from everybody and and uh, I just couldn't stop thinking about how much coach meant to me in my life and literally the impact that he made affected my the entire course of my life from um you know meeting meeting margo at u of a to uh you know being able to have a career in basketball and and uh, how i how i coach basketball how i played um you know how i see the game uh, it all all those things point right back to to uh, coach olson so it's it really is a, a sad day